second episode of Meet the Artist. I'm Jenny Nicole, and I'm here with my baby Lola today. So first we're going to talk about how I got into songwriting. I would say that I've always been a writer in general. I can remember in elementary school, I would always do creative writings, even if they weren't assignments, just for the fun of it. And then in middle school, specifically seventh grade, I was really into poetry, writing it, not so much reading it. And then I would, you know, write songs, but not seriously, once in a great while. And I was into uh, compositions for a concert band, especially going into high school. But it wasn't until 2013 that I got into uh, songwriting, songwriting. And what prompted me to do that was I went through a divorce. I had been married for seven years. And then after going through that, even though it was, you know, a mutual decision, it's, it just has a lot of impact on you emotionally. So I had a lot of emotion to release. So I did that via songwriting, just, you know, kind of pour your heart out onto paper. And then also uh, a lot of the songs that I created uh, stemmed from the experiences I encountered um, upon trying to put myself back there in the dating world, especially on like, online dating. So a lot of the songs come from both good and bad experiences, mostly bad, <laughs> from uh, dating as an adult. So as I started getting more songs done on paper, I decided, hey, maybe this is a hobby I really want to pursue and I would like to learn more about the craft. So I reached out to a uh, a local teacher who is also a singer songwriter and his name is Charlie Brown and he recommended that I start a couple different places one he recommended Jason Bloom and I'll put this information in the description below and he also told me to check out NSAI which stands for Nashville Songwriters Association International so I checked them both out and I ended up joining NSAI um, they offer song feedback, uh, different workshops, they just have a lot of information out there for songwriters and different events and whatnot. Um, so that really helped me grow as a songwriter and not just do it, you know, as a lighthearted hobby, but actually know what I was doing. And after about a year, year and a half into that, I decided, okay, maybe this is more than a hobby. I would like this to be a little side job. This is something I, I enjoy. Why not make money off of it on top of that? So as I became more serious, um, I continued with NSAI, and I also recently uh, learned about Brent Baxter uh, and Johnny Dwinnell. They do a podcast called The Climb, and it just has a wealth of information. I highly recommend it if you're a songwriter, if you're in a band, even if you're a band manager, it can be helpful for any of those. So last time I talked about the genres that I write. Today I would like to talk more about what genres I listen to for my personal enjoyment. And you probably haven't heard of any of these. Um, that's okay. So yes, I do listen to mainstream radio. You know, your Taylor Swift and Katy Perry. But that's not necessarily anything that I would buy personally. Um, it's more like just trying to stay current with the market so I know how to best uh, write my songs so that they would possibly get cut in the future. Um, so I listen to that. I also listen to country and honestly I never 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 liked country until in what was it 10th grade my dad bought a Ford Ranger which is a little pickup truck and he let me drive that back and forth uh, from school and work into home. So I'm like, okay, I have a truck. I need to listen to some country music. So I didn't necessarily listen to it because I liked it, but I thought, okay, it fits the truck. And eventually kind of grew on me. I do tend to think that a lot of it sounds too similar, especially lyrically. All seems to be about a truck or the girl or, you know, a tractor. <laughs> but yeah. I, I've grown into it, um, but as far as stuff I listen to that I would actually purchase or play on purpose at home, 
Um, these are the things you've probably never heard of. One, I listen to Bollywood, which is music from India. Specifically, I love Bhangra, which is from the Punjab region of India. And I also listen to a wide variety of Latin music, salsa, which you may be, may be familiar with, bachata, merengue, all of that, as well as regional Mexican music, anything from Duranguense, Banda Norteña, um, I love cumbia, really love that, especially to dance to. And even just Mexican folk music or mariachi, they just have these rhythms that they just get you into the mood to clean your house when you don't feel like it, or just bring a smile to your face because it's really upbeat and catchy. So as a songwriter, one question I get a lot is what artists have influenced me? And I honestly hate being asked this because I feel like an idiot because there isn't one. Um, I feel in general I lack information about pop culture and there is a reason behind it. Growing up, my sister and I were not allowed to listen or purchase mainstream music. It was strictly Christian music, which I am thankful for. And now as an adult, hearing how inappropriate a lot of this music is, I completely understand and I'm thankful for that. But I feel like I missed out on a lot of music that I probably should be familiar with, especially uh, being a songwriter. Um, so it wasn't until high school or late junior high that we were allowed to uh, choose our own music. Uh, let's see, the Spice Girls and Will Smith were my first CDs. Um, and then even after having that flexibility to choose what I listened to, I was already getting more into Mexican music. So I didn't really focus on mainstream American music, so I still feel like I'm lacking, but there isn't one specific artist that has influenced my, my style. Um, like I mentioned before, I listen to a variety of things, and I get bored if I focus on you know one genre or one artist, so I'm constantly you know, going from one thing to the next. So I think that you'll find that my writing kind of reflects that because none of my songs are the same. You'll hear everything from country to reggae, punk rock, and everything in between. Okay, so let's get into more about who I am outside of uh, my music. So as I mentioned in the first episode, I was going to college originally for music education, and I said I ended up with a music minor so what did I go to college for? I went to become a Spanish teacher. And I had a question from Joyce. She sent me an email asking how I got into Spanish. Well, actually in the high school, I didn't even sign up for Spanish. They put me there because the elective I wanted was already full. And I was nervous because I heard that the Spanish teacher hated freshmen. Like, oh great, here's a teacher that doesn't even like me before she's met me and it's a class I didn't want. But I got in there and Spanish just came so easily to me and I just enjoyed it. I would come home each day from school and this was back uh, when we had AIM and Yahoo Messenger and I would just search for people from around the world that spoke Spanish and even if I only knew how to ask them two questions, hi, what's your name, how old are you? I would ask 10 different people and then the conversation would progress um, as I learned more and more in Spanish. So going into college, I stuck with Spanish because it was just so easy and so fun for me. Um, so I stuck with it, and then when it came to that time where I had to decide, okay, is this music working out? What's going on here? I realized I could give up the music because it just wasn't going to provide me job security more than likely. Because um, as I mentioned in episode one, a lot of the schools cut their arts programs but Spanish is in high in demand, at least in my area, as far as education goes. So I went with that, and I'm very happy, happy with it. I love it. I teach high school Spanish, and it's a lot of fun to see those kids come to me in Spanish too. Um, and then seeing them progress. So I have traveled a lot. I lived in Mexico 
for a while and have traveled all through Mexico. I lived in Buenos Aires, Argentina for a month. <laughs> My other dog is snoring over there. And I took a master's course there. And then I've also traveled to Costa Rica and Puerto Rico. So that's kind of my life outside of music, is my Spanish teaching gig, and then my two beagles. So in the next episode, we are going to feature a guest artist. So, so stay tuned to see who that might be. Thanks for tuning in. Don't, don't forget to subscribe. And again, I have the links below in the description for the people that helped me get started and that I think might uh, help you get started as well if you were. So Persona en el espejo